and someone suggested I should be a lawyer and I went, oh, okay. Um, and I looked into it and because I was working in radio, I said, oh, I'm going to be a media and entertainment lawyer. Of course, that's what you do, right? And that's just, that's the precursor to 20 year on rule me. So there was no real, there was no real, uh, other than a pastor, after I'd sort of made all these decisions, a pastor said to me, yeah, that makes sense. You should be really good at that. And it was just that little bit of extra encouragement that I, I took with me. But the rest seemed to just have, you know, I didn't take a traditional path through like to university because I was working mm. in radio. I didn't need a university degree. Mm. So I didn't go to university until years later when, you know, all these things happened. And I thought, well, yes, I'm going to be a media and entertainment lawyer. Of course, that's what I should do. And and the pastor said, yes, you'd be really good at that. And then I, I was working at a law firm just as a you know, a junior dog's body in a law firm just to get some experience. And, you know, they they believed in me enough to say, yeah, we think you should do it. We'll, we'll support you and give you time off and write letters of recommendation to universities and stuff to get you in. So I, I did that. It was, it's really, that simple. it wasn't, it wasn't any sort of, you know, big flash moments or divine appointments. It was just that inner sense of, yeah, that's what I like. That's what I really enjoy. And I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. So I wish it was, mm. wish it was more. Uh, in fact, no, but that's awesome. Fact, mm. We just had a, a a month holiday this year. We got a we hadn't been away for three years, like most of us hadn't been. So we took a month out, and I was genuinely hoping that I'd use this month to refresh, revive, and and just just what's next? What's big? What's the new vision? What's what could I do? What's you know re reconnect with these ideals and. I was hoping for something really big uh, and really obvious, and I got nothing except right towards the end of the holiday when I was feeling a bit frustrated that there was nothing. It was just kind of like you almost could have been like my takeaway could have been just stick with what you're doing. Just stay there. You're right. Don't move. But towards the end, it was just this one little still small voice which kind of just said, almost whispered in my ear, just like focus on your board work and explore USA. That's it. And that was maybe two months ago. So I'm still trying to unpack that simplicity into, you know, comp turning something so simple into something complex is what I love doing, I guess. But um, yeah, that's what that's so that's where the, that's, you know, to land right where we're at right now. Wow. Uh, thank you for sharing. Go, Deb. Yeah, no, I love uh, it's always a bit scary when the, that still small voice comes because there's always something shoots from that and um i'm excited brett for whatever the future holds um but um yeah look i think um even just listening to what you're saying about this this inner navigation that helped you make decisions as the opportunities or as the doors will open you know i feel like for for most people it's um in our generation um kind of we've come off the back of the baby boomer generation that we're all about you know stability education getting the 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 foundational parts of society and and their part to play in it down pat and then we are kind of like this this what was it gen, gen z kind of thing where we kind of had a little bit more let's follow our dreams like you know um and and <coughs> i guess um some of us had to sort of try new things um, it was a, like even my journey as a as an artist or a singer songwriter. There was no beaten path, um, and it was more like we had a bit of opportunity to explore things a little bit more in the arts and entertainment space. And I think that's been a huge privilege. I think that Brett, I share with you, and just um, yeah. For, but I think a lot of our generation as well just had this kind of. There, there were well-beaten paths of education and of, of study that led to certain jobs and, and so forth. And as I go back to Danny's thing about like reflecting and observing the capital C church at large and um, our generation <coughs> in particular, which is poised and at this place where really we're at this kind of halfway mark of life and we really, I feel like there's wisdom over the decades that we've had um, but there's also um, cap capacity potentially to be able to get yeah. back, to be able to start, you know. Um, there's, yeah. there's one extra thing to that, Deb, I think also is we've also got this, I don't know whether it's by design or accident or on purpose, but I think we, we've also got, 
not a responsibility, but we've got to figure out a lot of stuff too because the, the world's changed. Like when mm. I was writing those 20 year old stuff, internet didn't exist, a computer barely existed. Um, and, and now, you know, everything's just upended and changed and changing so fast. How do we navigate that other than trying to stay on top of everything and, you know, just, just normal daily life stuff. It's, it, and and, and uh, even to think about some of the aspirations we may have once had might not exist anymore. Like, I know people who I, I grew up with wanted to be work with certain jobs in television and those jobs don't even exist. Like, they're gone. Like the internet's just changed everything. Um, so we've got to figure that out as well. So it's not like with the, the generations who went before us with that stability and trodden path with education leads to good jobs. That social contract I don't think exists anymore. I don't think we can say that. I think we can say, well, education will help you. Like, you, you mm. can't not be educated, but is that mean because you got an MBA, you're going to get a good job? Probably not. Because almost everyone's got an MBA now. And what do you do when everyone's got the MBA? How do you compete against that? That's a good question. Where is this next generation going to find themselves and build back into society or build on what we've got? Um, yeah, but I guess it's this sense as well of where do you have those moments of am I in the right thing? Am I Is what I'm doing what I was born or what I was created yeah. to do? And those almost like those dissonance of alignment and um, I think that's kind of, yeah, if you want to unpack that a little bit today as well, like where yeah. do we find yourself at that point? How do you kind of make a, make a change or how do you start to, you know, navigate out of that? Yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me that question over the years because they go, oh, am I doing what I'm meant to be doing? And, you know, there's this really anguish behind the question sometimes. And I think people need to, first of all, not overthink it, right? Don't worry too much because <clears throat> here's why. I think if you're not doing what you probably should be doing, you'll feel it. You'll sense it. Things won't work. You'll feel uncomfortable. You'll feel like a fish out of water. You know, if I went now and tried to do, I don't know, uh, I, I probably wouldn't be great at front customer facing roles, having to deal with customers all day. I just, some people are built for it. I would not be great at being a teacher in a junior school. Some people are built for it. I'm not. These are things like inherently I know I'm not going to be good at. <clears throat> Um, so, I, I, you know, you can sort of eliminate most of that anyway. But the sense is I've always felt that if you're not doing what you probably should be doing, and he, for me it's always been like imagine walking um, a road and <clears throat> you're anchored to this road with an elastic band and you sort of diverge off a bit and eventually the elastic snaps you back. Diverge, it's all interesting stuff, right? You, you can. It's not like there's waste experience or loss, but... I know I've always felt this inherent pullback to the, the, the idea, right? So I've never really, I've not too sweated that too much. And I don't think people should sweat it too much because you, you'll know, you'll know if you're not doing what you're meant to be doing because your life won't feel great. You'll feel wrong. You know, things won't work. Things will be actually harder than they probably actually need to be. And I'm not saying that just because everything happens easily, that's what you should be doing. It's not that inverse is true either. But it's a clue, right? It's it's all these clues we pick up along the way, the still small voice, people in our lives shaping us and telling us, people, you know, giving us wisdom and advice. There are all these data points that we can use to help help it. You know, it doesn't it might not just be a big revelation for a lot of people. For most of us, we just gotta figure it out, right? I love what you've just said there, Brett, because I mean part of what you would say is it was serendipitous, right? In inverted commas, that you ended up back in that same studio nine yeah. years after, right? And then you think, oh, how did, how did um, Joseph meet those, those kings, um, the servants of the king to interpret their dreams? And how was David in the right spot at the right time when Goliath, you know, and where, how did Moses walk past the, that bush? It was that particular, like, so what seems serendipitous so often is God's hand of movement. And that's sort of what you're saying is like, you can't overthink it. And it's, it's difficult for us who want control. We want control. Yeah. And part of it is just you've got to go and you've got to do and you've got to also trust that God is going to pull you and open doors and close doors. And that's where, as you say, like the open, openness to go, God, what are you doing with me? And I think we want to have more certainty than that. But I think that well, any of us who have lived a little bit longer would all sort of share a similar testimony. I think Kimson, um, Ro, Adrian, Deb, myself, none of us have. You know, we've got degrees probably, 
none of us are doing it. Um, mm. We've probably all had upteen jobs and moved left and right along the way. Um, I'm in a treaty shirt today, and guess what? I don't even know how to use a drill. Like, it's <laughs> we 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 um we end up in funny places, and there is this whole God element to to this, which I love that you're bringing that in. So it's not all on us just to make it work and, and come up with it. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm conscious of our time. This has been riveting. Debs, who do we want to take, invite to, um, to speak into this space? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've got another um, friend, guest, um, John Chung. I'm just chatting with him at the moment. And yeah, he's happy to say hello. Good, good. Okay, we'll bring him up. And um, yeah, and have a bit of a chat with you, John. Um, yeah, lovely to meet you guys. Um, really interesting um, to hear from Brett. Um, I've never put a um, name to a face, Brett, but um, in the bits of stuff that we've done with you, I can tell you you've made a huge impact um, uh, in the work with our clients uh, in the not-for-profit uh, or Christian organisation space um, in particular. Um, so uh, different generation, but I just wanted to affirm your calling um, in the bits and pieces that uh, sometimes it is those small things that create a bigger arc. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, John, I've known John for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And, um, yeah, we actually had a, a catch-up yesterday. I had lunch yesterday. And um, it was interesting just talking through um, some of the journey that, um, you know, he's had both of us on. And, um, I, John, you were sharing just how you started your – or moved out into your firm – in about 10 years ago, and I guess some of the um, questions that you were asking at that time in terms of, you know, what it means as a Christian to work and, and have purpose in, in their work and your, you know, your journey through that. Do you want to share a little bit about, a bit about that? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I, I pro probably, I, I really like it. I, I like, love the, the way Brett described it. There's those little voices and a feeling of discontent um uh, I, I i think either you or he um through the generation after baby boomer in there somewhere deb um well i'm the generation after that um so i, I think i just uh sit on the cusp of x and y which means i'm the generation that everyone said was entitled um and all that kind of stuff and unsettled um <laughs> You're not a millennial, and, though, are you? No, 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 no. I have to manage millennials, which is even quite worse. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, so in that early stage, um, so I started out in insurance law um, and uh, I had real questions about God, why on earth? <laughs> like, did you make a mistake? Um, because uh, I, I always wanted to do overseas mission work. Um, and I thought it was, I thought it was uh, enough for me to be willing, um, uh, so ready to go, willing to stay. Uh, please don't make me willing to stay because I'm not. Uh, so that was me. Um, and I absolutely knew that I was supposed to work my corporate law job, as it then was, and it felt like I was wandering around in the desert um, for a long time. Um, so that's what it felt like. Um, and I felt like I was open um, and I felt like God was not speaking. Um, so, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, I look back now and it how, all kind of makes sense. How many sense. years ago was that, John? Oh, this would be, this is, this is before I even met Adrian. So this is kind of going back to late 2000s. So, yeah, that was there was a couple of years in insurance law where I was, you know, wondering what on earth I was doing there. Um, but yeah, I think I, I, I liked what Brett said because it, it is those, how do you maintain and be open to some of the relationships? Um, how do you be open to the little opportunities that come up along the way and you just be available along the way? 